Right, here we've got another watercolour exercise, which I hope you'll enjoy. Based on a painting I did some years ago in oils, and uh, this is going to obviously be going to be a, a watercolour version. So we start off choosing our basics, setting it up, choosing our colours, sky, mountains, foreground, and I'm going to sketch with a pencil. It can be any pencil. I'm going to use a water soluble, only because I've got them, but you can use any dabbing cloth. Don't use a tissue as I did in my previous tutorial. Not a good idea. And now we start the sketching. This is uh, literally putting down the basics. It's not going to be a detailed sketch. You can take it as far as you want in your sketching, obviously, or you can work without any sketching at all, depending on how comfortable you, you feel and what reference you're working from. As I said, I'm working from a previous painting, and it's, so I'm quite familiar with this. And uh, even though it's a different medium I'm working in, so I'm putting it, I'm sketching in the, the basic mountains now with some of the, the relief and some of the valleys in the mountains. Light source is always important. Can't stress this enough. It's always important, no matter what you're working on. So uh, in this case, I know where the light source is. As you're looking at this, it's coming from your right. So the sun would be coming from the right. And of course, you'll see it again as, you, as the painting progresses. Yeah. Here we go, we're still sketching. Starting to bring down the sketch now, so we, we're choosing a sort of middle background in a sense. And then we'll start putting in the buildings and the trees and, and I'm splitting the painting up into essentially three parts. So it's sky, mountains, house in the middle, sort of buildings, and, and then the very bottom will be the, the lawn or the, the, you know, the foreground grass, which I'm sort of sketching through now. Now we start putting in some of the buildings. Very, as I said, it's quite, quite uh, sort of roughly done. I'm not um, doing this really accurately, primarily because it's an exercise. Although, as usual, I take these things quite far. You can work very boldly and very loosely, and I will do some of those later on. Some more sort of watercolor. Exercise really watercolor uh, basics, but this one now I'm just really going to take it as more of a finished watercolor painting. Right, dum 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 dum. Probably time to put in some music background, ambient sound. Keep this. I think it's always. <laughs> It's always important to have some sort of sound working. Anyway, we've pretty much finished our sketch, so we're getting ready now to start laying down water, color, layers. So we start with the sky and the background, naturally, and then we build up on top of that. And you usually work in watercolor, you work from light to dark, for obvious reasons. Reasons being, of course, that you can't really cover up. So if you work too dark too quickly, you can't take it back, whereas you can with acrylics and oils and wash and other sort of paints. But watercolor is very transparent. It's a transparent medium. So you, you plan it quite carefully and you try and keep some white. Well, you don't have to, but ideally, you want to, rather than paint white, you'd like to keep your page white. So you would mask out or simply avoid areas, certain areas uh, with the paint so that you've got your paper showing through. But I'm just now going to lay down some colors, some sky and some background. Very, very light, very loose. I'm not going to get carried away with the color, the clouds in this case. Um, you, you, again, you could uh, later on, you can decide, well, I need more clouds. I need more of a, a dramatic scene, skyline, and I'm going to add to that. But it's always wise to start off with watercolor, start off lightly and build up. And of course, your sky doesn't have to be blues. You can add you can add all sorts of colors depending on the time of the day, stormy clouds, clear sky, dramatic scenes. You might have oranges and yellows and purples and even bits of green showing through. But essentially, uh, here we go, <laughs> little blotch in the wrong place. But uh, hey, that's all part of the exercise using too much water here. So we're still painting, we're still going, covering the clouds, speed it up. 
I could have used a bigger brush, but I'm just basically using the pretty much the one brush all the way through. Later on, when I start detailing a bit, I'll get to a finer brush. But this is sort of wet on wet painting. Dabbing my brush, cleaning the brush regularly, and then we start taking some of it off if it's too much. I'm probably a little bit too too blue in a sense, so uh, I'm, I'll have to tone it down with bits of purple and mauve and make it a little bit more dramatic and a little bit more in sort of neutral in colour in, in a sense. Yeah, that's pretty much our sky, I think, for now. I don't know if you can hear the sort of weird sounds that I can hear in the background, but if you can't, good one. If you can, sorry about this, but it, um, yeah, we're painting in a public place. <laughs> Well, not quite, but uh, it feels like I'm in a public place. This whole thing with lockdown and self-isolation is um, you kind of have to make the best of what you have and what you have to do. Here we go, more wet on wet painting, and it's pretty heavy, so I'm going to break it down and shift it around, move it a bit, and take a lot of it off as we go. Being a, being a little bit finickety actually over this um, and I probably shouldn't worry so much about it but we will come back to the to the sky if need be later on and add to it but um, I think it's time to start some of the mountains now so we'll start adding some light layers to it basically painting shadow colors initially which are going to be the sort of blues and purples again and you'll find with your mountains depending on the distance they do tend to go more grey, blue, blue, mauve, purpley colours. You have you don't really notice a sort of the forestry or anything like that, unless it's snow, and of course unless it's a very dramatic sunset, sunlight on there. Um, but you'll see. I, I'm just adding sort of colours at the moment, kind of shadow colours. Still going. Hope you're still. Entertained and staying awake <laughs> while you watch this. Don't be put off by the so many options that one can have and people's advice and because these days, I mean, there really are a lot of options. There's lots, there are lots of different art materials and different papers, and people can be very specific and get really sort of carried away with with what you can paint on or what you should use, what type of pencils and who the manufacturer is. Um, it, it can be daunting, and I, I find it can be over overemphasized. And I think back to when I came out of college, I had this sort of shiny new uh, diploma in fine art. But we had painted, we used fairly basic materials when we were at art college. And the, and the first time I went to an art shop to officially buy canvas, the guy was so sort of up himself, <laughs> and, you know, I felt really intimidated. And he was talking about all these different canvases and the names of canvas and different weaves and what have you and I, I left the shop but not buying anything and thinking man I've been through three years of art college and I don't know a thing and I actually thought hang on a sec I can paint on board I can paint on on uh, all sorts of rough canvas and I actually went and bought some tent canvas uh, it was off cuts of, of thick green canvas and I started my first paintings on that and it worked perfectly it worked and, then, and I think the same with watercolour. Admit, admittedly, it's nicer to work with a, a good watercolour paper, a thick watercolour paper, a textured watercolour paper. But don't be put off. And there are a lot of options, as there are options with the type of paints that you get. You might start with student paints, which are not as permanent and they're not necessarily as good as your professional paint, watercolour paints. But if you're starting out, there's no harm in doing that. And in addition, I think this is a good time. Sadly, we have to be locked down and, and self-isolated in a lot of most cases. And we've got to take this pretty seriously, I know. But it's also a time to realize things that you've always wanted to do, to be able to clean your house out and to do different types of exercise and, and refocus and reassess your values and readjust and, and, and bring out those sort of creative aspirations you've always had. So you can actually now start looking at doing things that you've you've always probably thought about doing 
and maybe have never had the opportunity to do. And even buying some of the basics, you can. I think in most cases you can buy pretty much what you need online. And I'm going to. I'm trying to keep this as basic as possible so that you don't have to get carried away with, you know, um, materials and equipment that you're going to need. And I think what I could do as well while this is going is give you some interesting facts and background to painting, and specifically in this case to to watercolor painting. I will get back to some of the background and history to watercolor painting specifically and give you some interesting, which I find interesting, interesting facts and, and uh, details about, about watercolor. Having said that it's not really important to know the terminology, it's nice to know it if, you've, if you have it. Um, I'm, I'm not too bothered often about the history and, and uh, terminology that's used. As I said, I'm, I tend to be a little bit perverse when it comes to something like this. But that's just me. Some people enjoy it. I tend to work the other way. I find that I would rather do the basics and get almost animal instincts. <laughs> I work with uh, what I've got and make the best of what I've got. And as I said, I can work on different, you know, right to working on cardboard. And uh, I mean, when I was at art college, I was suspended for painting on the walls, for example. I'm not always that uh, radical, but um, in my student days, I probably was. But uh, that's, as you can see, I'm now starting on the, the buildings and the foreground and the trees. So to keep you entertained, let's give you some a couple of tips of the history or the background to watercolor painting. It was started in China, where the, the use of brush and watercolor or diluted inks first reached a form of, of fine art, very closely related to the Chinese calligraphy as Essentially, the same materials are used in both, and the same techniques are used in both. And it was started with sort of silk, painting on silk or paper. In more recent times in Europe, um, the apprentice artists, it's believed anyway, the, the apprentice artists train by making tonal drawings using a brush and a mixture of water and a single brown pigment. This pigment was made from beech wood and had a specific name. It was known as bistro. And then during the 17th century, artists began to make more use of the technique and added sepia, which interestingly is the reddish brown pigment made from the inky secretions of cuttlefish. And for those of you who like to know some of the history of art, I'm reading from a book by Ian Sidaway. It's a painting in watercolors, guide to painting in watercolors. And he, he states here that a a guy called Paul Sandby, 1725 to 1809, worked in the military drawing office at the Tower of London and was seen as the father of English watercolour. A founding member of the Royal Academy in London, Sandby worked exclusively in England, Wales and Scotland. His work had great flair, poetry and a sense of place. He was not afraid to experiment, using watercolour both as thin transparent washes and as body colour. His exhibitions in London influenced many younger artists, etc., etc. Interesting. Okay, so um, back to my little watercolor exercise. As you can see, I'm still I'm now adding more detail to the uh, the little buildings, this sort of window, roughing out thatch, roofs and trying to keep the, as much of the white as, as possible. These buildings are obviously very white. There's sort of it's a kind of Cape Dutch feel about them. And uh, they seem to, they, these sort of farmhouses were, were quite white, white wash. And they're adding little bits of detail to the trees. I'm, I'm getting a bit carried away with, with detail, I know, at this point. And then I'll go back to some of the the broader washes and the, and the bigger brushes again. As you can probably see, I'm using the chisel brush again, so it gives me the option of having a pointed edge or point for detail work and a the sort of flat, broad area for painting bigger brush strokes. And uh, I'm, I'm basically adding a lot of detail here, and I go over it with, with layers as we build up layer upon layer. And we're going to jump ahead because uh, otherwise this is going to take so long. So we now have the um, 
almost finished painting where I'm rubbing, I'm taking off some of the uh, masking fluid that I've put down. But I'm also going to add more detail, more colors, and uh, again, layer upon layer, that's what it is, and putting more of the sort of definition in and, and stronger contrast now. And you can see how the paper's curling because of the water and the fact it's not stretched, which gives me good reason to stretch. I prefer working in stretched watercolor paper. And as I keep saying, I'll cover this as soon as my, as soon as my order of gum strip paper arrives. It's the best thing to use. You can use, I've used masking tapes and things, but gum strip is the best way to, to work with it. It's, it's pretty much the ideal way of working and stretching your, your watercolor paper. And when your watercolor paper's stretched, you can paint so much more, well, I find I can paint much more boldly and much more, I'm much more confident because I can put a lot of water down and, and no fear of it buckling and, and it just gives me more control. Okay, we, um, we're getting to the last, really, as far as this exercise is concerned, getting to the last stage where I'm now adding other colors. You can see on the mountains, I'm, I've chosen where the sun is shining onto the mountains. So I'll add more yellows and oranges there and uh, shadow, stronger shadows. Again, layers and building up contrast and detail. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't put a list of the colors I've, I've used, although right at the beginning I sort of very quickly showed a, a range of colors. But if, you, if you're more interested in the specifics, um, by all means, give me feedback. I, I would love your feedback. And you can ask me what colors I've used, what colors I chose for this particular painting. And I'll give you the, the list of colors. You don't, obviously, don't feel bound by that. And as I said quite early on, don't feel intimidated. This is a fun thing, and it should be fun. And you will improve with practice. Uh, just enjoy it and experiment. And that's, that's really what it's all about. So here I'm, I'm doing darks and lights, and I'm going to, uh, again, put some of the light back into, once I've taken all of the, the, the masking fluid off, I can then put highlights of the trees and the leaves and things. Still adding some of the dark stuff. This, as I said, this, this could have been done much bolder and, and bigger and less detail. And I might do a similar sort of painting with that treatment. Very bold, very abstract or, or very impressionist. This has become quite sort of detailed and quite real which is, I have to say, is my tendency generally to work like that. So for the final stretch, excuse the pun, putting the last detail and uh, going to bring this, this painting to, to an end, to a conclusion. And I would uh, please, yeah, as I said, please give me feedback and have a look at my Instagram page, have a look at my website with the t tutorials, and you'll see this painting being posted. And I'm going to look at... Um, auctioning this one as well, as I've done with a couple of others in the past. So if you're interested, have a look at that. And thank you for watching yet another one of mine, and I hope you enjoyed it. And give me your feedback. I'd love to know how you're getting on.